Welcome into today's YouTube video. In this one, we're gonna cover if you are an appointment setter and just trying to land the opportunities, the three key mistakes that you should never do and the best ways that I've always found or been able to find 10K per month plus appointment setting clients. Yes, as you can see, this is more of a behind the scenes office uh, setup before I'm going into another mastermind in Dubai. Rumors are true, we're going back to Dubai again. Um, not because it's my favorite place in the world, but the host decided to do that mastermind in Dubai. And these are drumsticks. Yes, uh, this is my office. I have my little practice pad in here. Uh, it just keeps, keeps the things going. Uh, I've been playing drums for 20 something years. Um, it's just like whenever I have like some creative ideas and I want to just Take a rest, take a break, I just play some drums. So with that being said, this video was inspired by a guy named Evan. It's Evan, if you recognize yourself, thank you so much, man, for the inspiration. You said something along the lines of that, hey, I'm an appointment setter already. I know how the things work. I just need a position, I need an opportunity. So let's cover why, I don't know, a good percentage of appointment setters, you guys reach out to me like, hey, Blas, I'm already a setter, but I don't have an opportunity. And this thing blows my mind. Like if you are an appointment setter, why are you not working? And usually it comes down to you don't really have the skill. You might have seen some videos, you might have taken a course, but you don't have the fundamentals down because if you would be having that, then you know how you could set appointments for yourself with business owners. Meaning your calendar would be full, and you would be taking interview after interview after interview. But if you don't, then this video is designed for you to help you out with that. So let's get into it. I might play some drums. I hope it's not gonna sound too trash. Um, also wanted to ask you, do you like this new kind of more behind the scenes office vibe? This is not gonna be an edited video. Um, and I wanted to ask your feedback. This is like, I had the good old trusty whiteboard back in here. I sold that because I no longer use a whiteboard. I just realized that, but now we have this pretty significant white space between the window and my um, shelves. So any suggestions on what should we put here that would make the background look better? Maybe a plant, maybe a piece of furniture, maybe a piece of art. Let me know what do you think could look, good, uh, could look good in here and I appreciate all the suggestions. So with that being said, when it comes to lending opportunities, there's three key mistakes a lot of appointment setters make. So number one, that their profile is just looks like absolute trash. This is the, if it was like a scale, this is on a minor thing because I am a firm believer and I'm right now doing a test where I'll show you the results in probably the next video or a video very soon that we have a brand new profile. I'm not using any of my previous social media uh, presence. I'm not using any of my case studies, testimonials, results from the past to prove that you don't really need to post a whole bunch of things on your social media and still gonna be able to land really good appointment setting opportunities. So again, uh, at least basic profile menu for you is to have like a headshot, meaning like have yourself in a picture with your face in there so that the people can actually see that you're a real human being and they can connect an, a face to the name. Okay, that will make things a whole lot easier because a lot of people don't trust others online. You know, uh, there's quite a few scams out there, so it's really hard to tell if I'm a business owner, if something or someone is legit versus if not. If you can create some posts around like making appointments, booking calls, what works, best follow-ups, best strategies, some things that you learned uh, as an appointment setter that's gonna help business owners, then I would highly suggest you create them. Create like carousels, like you put text on um, simple images that helps people with their like booked calls, with their follow-ups, with their messaging sequences. And that just shows that you know what you're talking about. Another really, really simple and good example for social media is just take your laptop or take your phone, grab a friend and go to a coffee shop and ask your friend to take a few pictures of you while you're holding your phone, while you're in a nice location, so that you could actually portray like, hey, I love working from my phone, typing messages, setting appointments, etc. You're doing the active, you show the people that you do actively the thing that you're basically proposing them to. That's about a profile. It doesn't have any more than that. Have at least nine posts in there if you're carrying a brand new profile and you have more than enough. This is of course Instagram, have a LinkedIn, have a Facebook profile, same principles. Just show that you're a real genuine human being. 
Second thing that's really more important is comes down to like, look at what everybody else is doing in appointment setting marketplace. Everybody else is trying to cold DM, cold message, cold email, sometimes even cold call um, business owners because it works. Okay. What is the problem? That a lot of people think that, hey, I'm, if I'm going to send 10 messages, I'm going to have a client. That's the problem because you're not. Okay. So volume is king and consistency is the other part. So the biggest challenges I've seen with people trying to land opportunities is that they don't send enough volume and they don't do it long enough. These are, the, if you fix these two things, meaning your inputs, it's like going to the gym. You go into the gym, you lift, I don't know, if, even if you lift the heaviest weights in the gym, if you just go once, are you going to be shredded? No. So why would you expect if you send, I don't know, a hundred messages in one day to have a client tomorrow? It's the same concept. You go to the gym for weeks, for months, even for months after months, consistently, like two times a week, three times a week, every single week, every single month, consistently. And you look up after three months and guess what? Oh shit, I am jacked. Yes. Okay. Of course you can speed up your process by having a coach looking over your shoulder, making sure that you're like doing the right exercises. It's the same with appointment setting, making sure that you have a coach who is looking over your shoulder, making sure that you're sending the right messages. You're sending it to the right people. Let me give you one hint that helped me tremendously uh, skyrocket my results when it comes to lending opportunities is that everybody is trying to call DM on Facebook, uh, Instagram, sometimes even LinkedIn, maybe even TikTok. The best places I found opportunities in is this is again, this is where I find the opportunities. It's TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay. You find creators on these three platforms and then you find their email address. Crazy concept. I know like every, like think about it logically. A business is run on Instagram. Most of the time, the businesses that you want to be working with are already established. That means that the business owner doesn't spend their entire day on Instagram responding to their messages. They most of the time have a team. So if you reach out to the business owner on Instagram, there's a very good chance that you're going to be bumping into the actual appointment setter who's already working for that account. Guess what's going to happen? That appointment setter is going to be threatened that you as a new setter trying to take their job. So do you think that the already working with a company appointment setter is going to introduce you to the manager or to the owner? No, they're going to delete your message so that they do not even ever see it. Okay. Because they feel like you're a competition to them, which is by the way, it's good because in business competition creates better results. But again, they don't want the business owner to see your message. So instead, you I'm not saying don't do this. You can, because in a good majority of the cases, you can find good business owners on Instagram who are looking to hire. But what I found to work best is find their email address. It's super simple. You go into their websites. There's an impress them section or a contact us section. There you have it on YouTube. You just go to the about section in the creators, YouTube uh, profile. And then most of the time they have their email there, like handed to you on a silver platter. There you go. Or in even other cases, you just go on Instagram on your phone and there's the message button on people's profile. And right next to it, there's an email button. There you have it. Crazy simple. Do you want to go the extra mile and you found somebody who has like a multiple seven, eight, nine figure business that you just absolutely would love to work with? Do even go further than that and go the extra mile to find out their physical address. Like what other people are doing right now is they send copy and paste scripts, messages, templates that they get from online, Google, chat GPT from courses and, and I don't know, influencers, whatever saying like, say this like one line message and you're going to get a client. It doesn't work like that. It's not personalized. It's not, it doesn't have any of your human element, human touch to it. It's just a copy and paste message. Okay. So what I would do if I really wanted to get a client, and this is what I did to land a super big influencer yesterday is write them a personalized handwritten, once again, 
pen and paper handwritten letter, okay? Here's a pro tip, if your handwriting is trash, then go to your computer, type it in, print it out, and send both of them together to their physical address. Guess how much different you would show up as opposed to all the 99% of appointment setters who try to cold DM, cold email, cold whatever message, and you're just sending them a personalized handwritten letter to their front door. But Belas, how do I find their address? Bro, Google it, they have a company, they have an office. You're smart, you'll figure it out, cool? And then the last thing that you would need, if you just do these few steps, I, I can't believe that you are not gonna have interviews already, but if you just wanna make sure that you're actually gonna crush it, you need to negotiate better deals. Because I found so many times that appointment setters take deals with business owners just to have a client. Don't take every deal, have the abundance mindset. Business owners need you more than you need them. There's more business owners looking for appointment setters than there are appointment setters. You need to have this kind of mindset and at the same time, if you're presented with a trash deal where they don't wanna give you a base pay, they wanna give you less than 3% commission, which is a joke, um, just know your worth and tell them like, hey dude, yes, it is possible to start that way, but always ask, hey dude, I wanna make, let's say 5K a month as a setter within the next two to three months. Do you see that happening with your opportunity? If they say yes, the business owner says yes, you ask them, cool, so what would I need to do in order for me to make 5K a month in the next three months? And then you set KPIs, and then you guys discuss the terms, and now you have a plan to follow in order to how to get to actually that 5K, okay? Another pro tip, if you can, stand out from the crowd, how much different it would be if instead of trying to have a conversation about this on Zoom or on phone or a quick chat or what's up here and there, what if you would say like, hey, is it okay if I come to your office at 12 tomorrow? You show up live in person, you show yourself, you show that you're a genuine human being, you shake hands with the business owners and reciprocity bias is gonna work for you because even though you did all these steps prior correctly, then they will feel somewhat, again, it's not always true because it depends from people to people, but if you go out of your way to try and help somebody else, they will most of the time try and do the same. And even if you're not gonna be ending up working with that individual yourself, they might be able to refer you to their friend, partner, somebody else. So eventually you will have many, many more clients and always ask for, for referrals. Okay, like that's the easiest. If you don't end up working with somebody, you just ask like, by the way, who else do you know that have also a similar business to yours that are looking to scale and grow? Easiest question ever. Some people say, oh, I don't know anyone. Some people will say like, hey, because they already love you, they have this goal. Like if they already like you as a human being because you show up different from everybody else, they are gonna do what they can in their power to try and help you because they're a cool, genuine human being and they see that you are the same. All right, so with that being said, if this is helpful, give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll probably see you from Dubai for the next video. Peace.